welcome everyone. Today I want to talk a little bit more about attachment. When you research attachment, you soon see that therapists and academics use lots of different words to describe it. Anxious, anxious ambivalent, anxious preoccupied. But what do they all mean? And which ones should I use? Today I hope to clarify that by the end of the video. So sit tight, relax, and come along for a journey into the theory. Well, it all starts with the grandfather and grandmother of attachment theory, John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth. Generally, Bowlby devised the theory and Ainsworth created the test. Mary found in her research that when children were separated from their secure base, they would generally act in one of three ways. She clustered these behaviours into three categories. Cluster A. This cluster would show as much attachment behaviour with the stranger as it did for the mother. They had generally learned not to engage with the mother for attachment needs, and although anxious, they would not look for soothing or proximity. Cluster B had previously learned from experience that their parents were very likely to come back after separation. Some of this cluster therefore wouldn't cry out straight after the mother had left, because they had learned to trust in their parents' return. The children after a short period of time would become unsettled, and they would cry and call out for the mother. However, once the mother returned, the children were often easy to comfort and would begin to explore again. Cluster C would become very anxious very quickly when their mothers left. They also found it much harder to soothe these children. The suggestion by Mary was that the children had either been left for long periods of time or that the mothers had been inaccessible in the past. The researchers also noted that often in this cluster the parents were less able to show warmth to the children and to soothe their discomfort. It was suggested that the children had learned from experience that the parents were unlikely to be present for them. The children would also cling and resist being let go due to fear of further abandonment. Some of the children also showed anger at the mother for leaving. This could potentially have been a build up of resentment from being rejected in the past. As you can see, there is a cascade of behaviours from how the child is treated. If the parent is in tune, available and soothing, they learn to trust in this availability and feel safe enough to explore. If the primary care figure is inaccessible and leave the child for long periods of time or struggle to show loving and soothing signals to the children, they become anxious of the next departure and battle for their needs of affection and proximity. If the child is continually rejected, they become angry. If this emotion is then punished on top of this, the child learns to inhibit their emotional expressions and do not rely on the mother for emotional warmth. The first is secure, the second is anxious, and the third is avoidant. So we have three descriptors. Where does ambivalent and preoccupied come in? How does dismissive and fearful fit? So anxious and ambivalent is sometimes used as a way of explaining the response of the child to the parent's attempt to soothe them. They are ambivalent, unresponsive, because they don't trust that once soothed, the parent will come back. Therefore, the attempts of the parent to soothe don't create a sense of safety easily. Preoccupied describes the same anxious group of children. They are too preoccupied with the parent's whereabouts that they don't grow confidence in exploring the environment. So essentially, we still have three categories described in different ways. However, the last two are a little bit more complex. Researchers Bartholomew and Horowitz argue that there is one more type of attachment style. They suggested that the avoidant category breaks into two fearful and dismissive, giving us four attachment styles in total. According to the researchers, avoidant dismissives think little of other people's ability to be there for them and therefore see others negatively and deny their need for people. However, avoidant dismissives don't see themselves in a negative way. They have a positive view of the self and a negative view of others. Avoidant fearful people, it was suggested, see themselves as having little worth or being undeserving of love. They also believe that others won't be there for them and to not rely on others. 
Hopefully this summarizes the current categories in attachment theory. Please like and subscribe for more videos on attachment. Please also feel free to comment below. I'll do my best to respond to every message left.